having one lens on there, all of the focal lengths, all of the different kinds of things that I want to shoot, makes it way better. The video that you can get out of these two lenses is quite simply stunning, completely balanced. The key here is these handles. If you're looking to get one lens that you can put on a gimbal, balance it, and just fly it for the whole day without having to change it out to anything else, this. This right here, this is it. It's the Samyang 35 to 150. And if you're looking for the too long didn't read over the Samyang or the Tamron, get the Samyang. We'll talk more about why later. Having the range of 35 to 150 is like nothing else out there. Now, obviously, if you need that super wide look, you got the 24 to 70, the 20 to 70, the 28 to 75. They're all good on the wide end of things. But I find for weddings especially, but this can be applied to general event coverage, stock work, shooting videos for somebody else, for yourself, for general content creation. A lot of the, the beauty, the hero shots, the portrait style shots, the close ups. When I'm filming people in general, I typically use like 50 mil and higher, often much closer to 80 mil. And if if you've ever shot with the 135 f1.8, you'll know what that lens can do, the compression it gets, and just how things pop. But it's hard to put that lens on a gimbal and just fly with that for the whole day because you have 135 and nothing else. This gets you that and everything between the 35 and 150 range. It actually gets you more of a look than that 135 because it goes to 150. The video that you can get out of these two lenses on a gimbal when you're flying it is quite simply stunning. I find myself using it for a huge variety of different things, even things like these little tiny subtle parallax movement shots setting up the scene at a venue, slow it down in post. It's just a really interesting look, really good way to showcase something. If you can try out the Tamron or the Samyang, borrow it from someone, rent it. You kind of have to try it out to see exactly what it is I'm talking about. But once you do, you'll get what it is I'm saying. But a big part of what makes this lens so special is that both of these actually go from f2 to f2.8 as well. And that's not a normal thing for a lens that can go from 35 all the way to 150. It's very unusual. It makes them both versatile in reach as well as in low light. And you can shoot in really dark situations like in weddings when reception and it typically gets a lot darker. And that 35 to 50 mil range which you have that f2 in allows you to capture it in just a much more intimate way. Something else that makes the Samyang a bit more versatile for video is the fact that it is par focal, meaning you can manually focus at 35, zoom all the way into 150 and it will still be in focus. Now the Tamron can't do that. If you zoom into 150 when you focus at 35, it's gonna be slightly off. It's not gonna be fully in focus. So it's not really par focal. So in terms of video, the Samyang is a better option. Now bear in mind that if you are moving on a gimbal anyway, that that really isn't gonna apply if you're manually focusing, but it's good to know if you were taking it off of the gimbal for any reason. But with that being said, the autofocus in both of these lenses is phenomenal anyway. It's not quite as fast as the Sony glass, but it's almost there. So if you're at 35, you zoom all the way into 150, you're in autofocus, it's not gonna have any issues anyway. Now in terms of autofocus, that's what I'm using 95% of the time. And there has been a update to the Samyang recently. A lot of people complained about its autofocus performance. I have had zero issues with it. Even put it in some trickier situations where I'm tracking a subject, like I'm touch tracking on a subject and I go in front of a tree, a tree goes between us, it still locks on with that, no issue. Now, if you're wondering about weight for this setup, I'm not gonna lie to you, it is pretty heavy. But for what it can do, I think that's entirely justified. This is the setup that I've been using at weddings this year. I've posted a ton of content about it. And I think the key here is these handles. It really changes where the weight is distributed when you're carrying it. If you just hold it in the center here, which you typically do with a gimbal when you don't have these handles on it, you can feel in the arms where you're holding it compared to when you have the handles on. These are the official DJI handles, which I will link below for you. You don't necessarily need to use these ones. These are just the ones that I grabbed and I'm very happy with them. I'm also using the RS3 Pro just as the arms are a little bit bigger there. So it allows you to balance things a little bit easier, balance bigger setups. I've actually been running with a big battery underneath these as well, the Anton Bauer batteries and that balances on here completely fine as well. It does add a ton of weight, but it still works. So as you can see right here, this is completely balanced. Now, because you can go from 35 to 150, you might be wondering, well, where do I balance that? And if I zoom in or zoom out, is it not going to interfere with how the gimbal was set up and balanced? Well, technically, yes, but gimbals these days, they really pick up the slack for anything that is not entirely balanced. So what I typically do is you zoom all the way in, you zoom all the way out and you kind of find the middle ground of where that is and that's where you balance the gimbal at. That way when you zoom out, when you zoom in, just gimbal's gonna be picking up the slack for you. Now obviously when you do have this balance, you wanna make sure that you are calibrating it properly and I do use the super smooth feature as well. You can use a lens support on here if you wanted to, tried it, I've also used it without, didn't really notice that much of a difference. Now a bit more into why the Tamron versus the Samyang and why I'd say the Samyang is probably the better option for you. Don't get me wrong, the Tamron is stunning as well. Seven out of seven completely agree that this is a fantastic buy as well. But simply put, 
The Samyang is $600 cheaper than the Tamron. A budget-friendly option is always a better option for the large majority of people. If you're buying a lens like this, it's typically to replace or to buy instead of buying multiple other lenses, which means it's normally a first lens you're buying or a second lens you're buying. So cheaper, more budget-friendly is a better way to go. Also, a bit more of a personal preference here, but just when I look back at the footage, I find there's something I can't really like put my finger on about the Samyang footage compared to the Tamron. Just the way it renders color, contrast, it's a little bit different and to my my eye, I prefer the look of the Samyang over the Tamron, but that is entirely my personal preference and you might say the same about the Tamron. But there is one other kind of practical thing that makes the Samyang a little bit better when you're flying on a gimbal in this setup than the Tamron. Now you could attach a focus motor on here to zoom in and out for you, but I just do it by hand. The Samyang is a little bit looser which means it's easier when you're flying it on the gimbal to zoom in and out. This is a little bit firmer, which means it's harder to zoom in and out when it's balanced on the gimbal. So when I'm flying with this on here and I zoom in, I typically find this is really pushing this around, which is fine, but generally speaking, I just find that's a little bit easier to zoom in and out because it is looser. For years, I've tried out different setups going between primes, 24 to 70s, back to primes again. But after filming every single wedding this year with my main camera, the FX3 on a gimbal and just using the Tamron 35 to 150 and the Samyang 35 to 150, I can confidently say I think this is the setup. Why is it important to just kind of have one lens on a setup like this when you're shooting something like an event. Well, there's gonna be a lot of situations where things only happen once or things happen quickly. You gotta pick this up, move around. And if you're faffing about changing between lenses, which then means you have to rebalance it as you're using a gimbal, you don't wanna be dealing with that. I have dealt with that a lot and it's a real pain getting caught off guard. So having one lens on there that can satisfy all of the needs, all of the focal lengths, all of the different kinds of things that I wanna shoot makes it way better. It's just way nicer for an experience for me and means I have to worry less about potentially missing the shot. If you want a more detailed comparison between these two lenses, I have made a video on that, which I'll pop up there. But if you're looking for the lens, one lens to just balance on a gimbal and leave it for a whole day, that's the one, this setup right here. All the links are below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.